Now verse 12, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek today, that is, for the very fact of the matter in this age, all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. All, if they're to be saved, must come the same way to Christ. No man cometh to the Father, the Lord Jesus said, but by me. You can go by the ritual of the Old Testament. You cannot go by the law. You have to come today. It doesn't make any difference what your race is. You come the same way, by faith. And it's offered on the same basis of mercy by faith. That is the proposition Paul is putting down here. Now he says the present salvation is for both Jew and Gentile. Now he's opened that subject up. Hear and believe the gospel. Listen to verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, that's a remarkable statement. Paul is actually turning to the Old Testament. There are eight quotations from the Old Testament in this chapter, and 30 quotations in this division, chapters 9, 10, and 11. And the quotation logically follows verse 12. But it makes very clear that both Jew and Gentile are called on the Lord, not do something for salvation. All you have to do is call on him, friends. To call upon the Lord means to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he says, how then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, it's necessary to understand, appreciate Paul's position here. His own people hated him as the apostle, but they applauded Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, the Pharisee, and he's showing here the logic of his position. They rejected his claim or the right to any of the apostles to proclaim a gospel that omitted the Mosaic system, which had degenerated into Judaism. Now, Paul shows that there must be messengers of the gospel who have credentials from God. And Paul began his epistle with the claim, he says, Paul, a called apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, there follows here this logical sequence. Preachers must be sent in order for people to hear that they might believe. They did not know how to call upon God. And Paul pinpoints all on believing. And this, therefore, necessitated his ministry. And that is the thing that he's saying here. And he's quoting, by the way, from Isaiah about how beautiful are the feet of those. I very frankly feel like this radio program is important. I'm giving the rest of my life to it, to get out the word. But when he quotes, how beautiful are the feet. Now, I'm down here making tapes today. And better not tell you the time, because I found out that people think I'm there at the time they hear it, and I may even be in their neighborhood at the time. But I do not even have on any socks today. I'm just sitting down here in my study in my bare feet, if you want to know the truth. And I've just looked down here at my feet, and they're not beautiful, friends. One of the things about feet is that they are not an object of beauty. But here is something Dr. Lang said in their running and hastening, in their scaling obstructing mountains, and in their appearance and descent from mountains. They are the symbols of the earnestly desired wing movement and appearance of the gospel itself. And that's one of the reasons that I love the opportunity of radio today. We can scale mountains. We can go over the plains and vast expanse of sea and water. And we can go into the inner recesses of the earth today with the gospel. And we can go into the homes, into the automobiles, into the businesses. And we found that we've been in some unusual places. We've been in bar rooms with the gospel by radio. Oh, may I say to you, that's what he means, that it's wonderful to get the word of God out. Now, verse 16. 
But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? And we rejoice here on radio the number that write in and tell us they've accepted Christ. And it's amazed us how many. But when you look at the total picture, it's really a very small percentage, by the way. Who has believed our report? Now he goes on and says, verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And friends, I come back to this. I think this is God's method. I may sound like a stuck record to you, but I must say this. I believe that it's not actually by preaching philosophy or psychology or some political nostrum, but I believe that today it's the preaching of the Word of God. It's not what I think. It's what the Word of God says. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing what? Hearing by the Word of God. And until you hear the Word of God, you can't be saved. Oh, how important that is. Verse 18, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth, and their words to the ends of the earth. I would not want to say that Paul had this in mind, because I don't think he did. And I don't think that it has reference to radio. But I do want to say this. It sure has application there that the sound has gone out today. And... It's a marvelous way of getting the Word of God out. And you don't have to listen to it. Probably a very small percentage do. And I'm amazed that anybody listen to us, but they do. And we believe that God today will bless His Word. Now, will you notice, but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I'll anger you. And he's quoting here, of course, from Deuteronomy 32, verse 21. And what he's doing today is just simply this. God is calling out a people among Gentiles today. And he's going to develop that in the next chapter, by the way. Verse 21, But to Israel he saith all day long, Have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. And have you ever stopped to think how tiresome it is just to hold your hands out? You try that. Just hold your hands out. See how long you can do it. That's the most tiring thing in the world that you can do. Just hold your hands out. You remember Moses went and prayed for Israel, and Aaron had to prop up his hands because he got tired holding them up toward God. But God says, I've been holding out my hands to a disobedient people. No one knows how gracious God has been to the nation Israel. And Stephen's final word to this nation is revealing. He says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Spirit. Now, that's not confined to just those people. That could be said today, that he's holding out his hands today to a gainsaying world. I marvel at the patience of God. I'll be honest with you, and I do not mean to be irreverent. If I was running this show today, this little earth down here, I'd make a lot of changes. I tell you, I'd move in. But you know, he's just holding out his hands to a gainsaying world today.